What up, folks? <laughs> it's time for the Wednesday Night Dynamite review as part of this year's Hater Mania 3, motherfucks. A video a day. Deal with it. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's, let's just get to it, all right? We have a lot to say about this. The show starts out with Eddie Kingston versus Vance Larcher, all right? Vance Larcher or Lance Varcher, whatever the fuck they call him now, uh, comes out. And all of a sudden, he's a face, all right? I don't know when this really happened, because for a while, he was kind of like a like a heel, just attacking heels. But now he's a face, you know? And they have a match. Um, I mean, I just can't get past the fact that Eddie Kingston is just a jobber, right? Like, this guy, he has, like, three moves. I mean, I like him. He's not bad on the mic, but he's not, like, a good wrestler, you know? So I don't know how people can reconcile the smarts, how they can reconcile liking him. With liking people like Nakamura. Actually, the answer is very simple now that I think about it. Both of them are three moves. <laughs> simple as that. You know what I'm saying? The match goes on. And uh, the finish, I actually did kind of like. So Butch and Bottom come out dragging Jake the Snake Roberts, who looks like he's 10 seconds away from dying. You know what I mean? This actually was disturbing because he's like fat and old. And he's not just like old. He's like like an old guy who has abused drugs and alcohol his entire life, basically. Right? So like... He doesn't look good, you know what I mean? He looks like he's about to die every time I see him. And they're holding him, he's all vulnerable, and I'm like, man, like, they need, to, they need to cut this segment quick before this guy dies on him, you know what I'm saying? So that happens, and uh, this distracts uh, Lance Archer, the Archer man, you know what I'm saying? And this allows Bunny to come out. She comes out, she's wearing, like, a mask. So, like, to prevent people from knowing who she is, she takes off the mask to reveal who she is, as if this is, like, some sort of, like, revelation that has any value, you know what I mean? Like, nobody cares but it is what it is, right? So then she uh, gives like this little like cuff, I guess it was like a little finger cuff to uh, Eddie Kingston. It's, it's like knuckles basically, right? And he puts it on, hits him with the back fist. You know what I mean? He hits Archer with the back fist and pins him one, two, three. Then they beat his ass afterwards, you know? The beat down was pretty interesting. He did the back fist again, but he didn't put the glove on, you know? Why didn't he just put the glove on? Just put him out of his misery. Just back fist him nine times until he's dead. Whatever, right? He gets uh, saved by... Um, who was it? I believe it was Phoenix, right? Uh, was it Phoenix or did that happen later? I don't know. Maybe he didn't get saved. Fuck knows, right? Uh, yeah, I don't think he got saved. I think I think Phoenix saved someone else. We'll get to that later, motherfuckers, I think. Then we have uh, MJF and Jericho, who are now the tag team representatives of a uh, fucking inner circle. You know what I mean? So that wasn't really that fun. I don't think they should be the tag team representatives. It should easily be Santana and Ortiz because they're the only real tag team. You know, what the hell are they going to do? You know, Jericho and MJF can do other things. But what is Santana Ortiz going to do while this run happens? You know what I mean? So it's them against the Varsity Blondes, which is a match that shouldn't happen because obviously Varsity Blondes haven't won a match on TV as far as I know, right? And uh, they're obviously not going to be Jericho and uh, MJF. The one cool thing was Jericho hits the Judas Effect and then does the Lion Salt, which I thought was just a fun way to just add one more thing. And the Judas Effect is definitely enough to get the pin. But the Lion Salt was like a nice, like, I'm still Jericho, motherfucks. It was a good moment, right? Then we see Shaquille O'Neal, motherfucks, the All-Star, the Hall of Famer, if you will, um, challenge Cody via satellite. I think it was part of, like, some show. Maybe it was part of, like, uh, you know, those NBA, like, uh, halftime shows they do. Maybe it was one of those. But he challenges Cody, and he's like, Cody, you look like a little girl with your blonde hair. Which I thought was fun, you know? Uh, back in the ring, Arn Anderson and Cucky Rhodes are in the ring. And they have the weekly, let's put over Cody Rhodes segment. You know what I mean? I'm sick and tired of this asshole. I keep saying it, nothing changes, you know what I'm saying? So he comes out there, and Arn Anderson uh, starts cutting a promo. Before he starts cutting the actual substantive part of the promo, he just does a nice little preface saying that this promo is going to suck, so please bear with me while I bore you all to death, right? He's just not good at promos. So he starts talking and he asks Cody, he says, Cody, do you know what this date means to you? And he rattles off a date in like 1985 or something, right? And Cody just shakes his head no, right? And, and then Art Anderson reveals that this was the date when Dusty Rhodes had a match with Tully Blanchard, then went back to see the birth of Cody, right? So Cody doesn't even understand that his birthday has inherent meaning. Like that's how stupid this guy is. Arn Anderson is like, hey man, do you does does this date your birthday have like and that was your birthday, your birth date, like the actual date he was born? Does this have any meaning to you? And Cody's like, no, what, what could that mean? I don't know what that is, right? So he, he's just stupid, you know. And then they have this whole like Cody starts crying because Dusty Rhodes was there for him, and I'm fucking sick and tired of hearing about Dusty Rhodes, you know? Dusty Rhodes classic, this and that, that and this. I mean, was this guy really like that big of a deal? You know? 
was he really like i mean i didn't watch wrestling back when dusty Rhodes was popular i'm not gonna lie but was he really this big of a deal like what the hell did this guy do but anyways it's neither here nor there i like dusty Rhodes the few times i've seen him so i don't want to like talk shit about him right now the match they're gonna have at the i think at the pay-per-view maybe at beach break i don't know probably the pay-per-view because it involves shaq it was, was, was going to be a tag match. It was going to be Shaq and Jade Cargill versus Cucky and Brandy, right? But Brandy's pregnant. So what do we do? We have Red Velvet come out, motherfucks. Red Velvet comes out looking like Tasha from Bachelorette. You know what I'm saying? Uh, however, her promo skills don't really match her looks. And nobody knows who this broad is. You know, I don't think I've seen her in a match. She's like a new person, you know? Um, but yeah, she wants to be Cucky's partner against Shaq and Jade. And Jade is like a male Shaq. And should be the champion of the women. You know, I think Jade, like, weeks ago when Jade was, like, confronting Cucky Rhodes. And I'm like, yo, Jade is of the body type where it would be believable that she could beat up Cucky Rhodes. Now, obviously she can't, but it would be believable, motherfucks. It'd be believable. So, um, that's how I feel about Jade. Jade and Shaq should win this match with no problems. They obviously won't. Obviously Shaq is not taking the pin. And, it, and the match is going to be mostly Jade Cargill, I bet, versus Red Velvet because Shaq is not a wrestler. And let's be real. If Shaq botches one move, that could be the end of Cody's career. Let's be real. Shaq doesn't know his own strength. Shaq is one of the strongest athletes of all time. And I don't even think there would be any chance in real life if Cucky got into a fight with Shaq. As a matter of fact, I think very few people in the world probably have a real shot against Shaq. But that's neither here nor there. Shaq is cool. It's always good to see Shaq, so I'm excited to see that. But just for Shaq, I don't give a shit about anything else. Next week, however, I think is Beach Break, and it's Kip Sabian's wedding. Probably the worst thing ever created. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this just becomes a ripoff of Lashley and Lana's wedding. And I also wouldn't be surprised uh, if it turns out that Rusev has been banging Penelope Ford, you know, is inserting that cuck gimmick once again. Kip Sabian, more like cuck Sabian, am I right? You know what I mean? Then we have Adam Page versus Ziggler's little brother, right? Uh, and th I mean that for real. Like, it's Dolph Ziggler's little brother. Um, uh, what's his face? Uh, Matt Hardy comes out, and he's kind of, like, there to scout Adam Page, right? Adam Page seems to be interested a little bit, which goes against uh, his rejection of Dark Order, which was predicated upon the fact that he doesn't want to be part of a group. And I understand being with Matt Hardy doesn't mean that he's in a group with Private Party, but it's kind of the same thing, you know? He will not be... Uh, unaffiliated, if you will. Then we have Dax versus Jungle Boy, and easily the most annoying match I've ever seen in my life, right? Uh, you're probably thinking to yourselves, why would I just not skip this match, right? I'll tell you why, because I wanted to see how annoying it could get, you know? I was actually surprised at how annoying the bar would be set, right? First up, the fans do an oh, oh, oh type of like, whoa, whoa, chant. I can't think of the melody in my head, but of, of Jungle Boy's relatively catchy music, if I'm being honest, right? Now, does this guy deserve these chants? No, but they did it anyways, right? Uh, fucking Mowgli, <laughs> acting like Mowgli over there, Jungle Boy, you know? And uh, then during the match, JR and other announcers, but JR really wanted to hammer in the name Dax the Axe Harwood, right? First of all, let's cut it right there, all right? Dax Hardwood is not someone that's cool enough to have a nickname. So just right there, we should eliminate this proposition, all right? JR kept saying, Dax the Axe. What kind of a man would want the Axe as his name? Oh, uh, Dax would, would be successful at every, uh, you know, time period in wrestling. And I've been doing this since the 70s. No, he wouldn't, JR. We all know he wouldn't. He wasn't even successful in WWE today, you know, let alone in the Attitude Era. If Dax was around in the Attitude Era, he'd be jobbing to Crash Holly, right? That's what would happen to Dax. He'd be jobbing to Steve Blackman. He would be like, I can't even think of someone uh, that would be on the same level of the card as him because I don't think anyone would be below Dax. I think he would be at the very bottom, scraping the bottom. You know what I mean? He'd be like Midian. He'd be like Midian except less cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, that's how I feel about Dax Hardwood over here. I'd say Dax the Axe, right? And um, at a certain point... Right, the match became even dumber. Actually, the point was when it started because they uh, handcuffed Polly and the other one with hair, I forget his name, uh, to Luchasaurus, right? And they handcuffed one guy to each of Luchasaurus's arms, right? The idea was that they would all sit down and because Luchasaurus is a gargantuan human being, they wouldn't be able to like, interfere because he'd hold them back. But what about the fact that Luchasaurus now has both arms literally tied, right? Whereas Toby Blanchard, who is an old man, and the other guy with hair both have one arm free, right? They can just start beating the shit out of Luchasaurus. He can't defend himself. 
It's the same thing as being handcuffed, you know? So I don't know why they didn't do this until the very end of the match, where they threw mist in his eyes, uh, not mist, uh, dust, I guess, like a powder in his eyes, and started beating him up. Um, the boy won with uh, essentially the regal stretch, let's call it what it is. I think it's called the snare trap here, but uh, he wins. He beat uh, Dax Harwood, which obviously is the right thing to do because Dex Harwood is presented as a tag team guy. So, like, he has no business beating Jungle Boy, who might one day have a singles career. You know what I mean? At least Jungle Boy is young, you know? And he's not worse than Dax Shepard. He's probably better. So, who the fuck cares? Dax Shepard. Dax Shepard's the actor, motherfucks. I, I, sorry, I meant to say Dax the Axe. You know what I'm saying? More like Dax the Ass. Am I right? But anyways, uh, so then after the match, uh, The Revival and uh, Tony Blanchard start beating the shit out of uh, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy. They hit the spike pile driver barely. They almost screw it up. And they just start beating the shit out of them until Marco Stunt uh, comes up to save them. But, of course, Marco Stunt can't do it himself. So he comes with, like, 15 other people. Like, those two black guys. I forget their name. Not the Acclaim, but, like, the other ones that aren't good. Uh, like, Top Flight or whatever. Like, like, Air Assault, whatever they're, they're called. Um, so this wasn't a good segment. I didn't enjoy it at all. Then we have Britt versus Shana. Or Shayna, whatever the fuck her name is. What the hell happened to this broad? I guess she was stuck in France or wherever the hell she's from during the pandemic. But more importantly, what happened to Big Swole? I thought Big Swole was going to get some sort of push after beating Britt Baker clean in that dentist match or whatever, right? But she's nowhere to be seen. You know? And all of a sudden, it's like Britt Baker never lost to her. Like, that feud meant nothing, you know what I mean? Like, if you're going to do it like that, either have Britt Baker win or don't have the feud at all, you know? Because then Britt Baker would be where she is now, but with a big win as well, you know? Baker is going to be one of the stars of the women's division. It's not going to be Big Swole. You know what I mean? So I don't know why they would have Big Swole win. I actually enjoyed that match. I remember it. was. I thought it was pretty interesting based on what it was. But it is what it is. You know what I mean? The next up, we have the Bullet Club, which is, uh, what's, it, what's it called? Uh, the Good Brothers and the Young Cucks. And they wrestled some people. For some reason, I am uh, I am doing this video the, the day after. Or no, I guess it's Friday today, motherfucker. What? Because I finished watching it yesterday. So I'm doing it a day after I watched it. And I don't really remember. I don't remember who they were wrestling. Was it Dark Order? I don't even know. Let's look it up. Why don't we just look it up up in this motherfucker? You know what I'm saying? AW results up in this bitch, yeah? So what happened here? Let's see. I think it was them. Um, oh, also, while I figure that one out, you know what I'm saying? Let's, uh, let's talk about something else that kind of happened, right? Um, it was like a promo. Yeah, it was uh, what's his face, uh, Darby Allen and uh, Sting. You know, I can't even believe they're going uh, they're going through with this, right? Darby Allen and Sting will be tag teaming in a street fight against, I believe, Ta uh, not Taz, but Team Taz, fucking uh, Ricky Starks and Cage. Right? This is ridiculous. All right, um, I'm I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I am not liking Sting. His run is garbage. Right? And it got me thinking a little bit about how I really feel about Sting. More on that later, you know what I'm saying? But um, that happened. They're like really like in the same team now, and they're gonna have that match. Now, obviously, that match is worth watching. It's not worth paying whatever 50 bucks for, but it's worth watching because it's Sting, motherfucks. It's as simple as that. It's Sting. It doesn't. It's Sting. It doesn't matter what else they do. Sting is in the match, and that's all that matters, motherfucks. However, upon thinking about this, right, it got me to realize, like, first of all, I've never really liked him, you know what I'm saying? like, I mean, I like him more than you know, present-day superstars, but I've never been this Sting fanboy, you know what I mean? Everyone in elementary school loved Sting, but I really wasn't into him. I wasn't really into wrestling at that point, but I was more of a rock and stone cold guy. Sting is cool, though. Like, I mean, he's jacked. He looks the part. He's charismatic. In TNA, I think he helped out a lot, but that's that's what, what the problem is, right? He started out in TNA where he helped out a lot, and the facts are what the facts are. The facts are the facts, motherfucks. He came there as an old man, right? But not old enough to the point where he couldn't wrestle. Like he was, let's say, like, what? Uh, what? He's, let's say he's 60 years old now, maybe. He's probably more. He's probably, like, 62, whatever, right? So he was in his 40s, right? When he went to the end, he was in his 40s. And a, and a man in his 40s can still kick ass. Like, no doubt about it. You know what I'm saying? There's no doubt that Sting can wrestle into his 40s. And he had some great matches, and he didn't, like, hold back. He was doing... He was putting on good matches. He was putting on effort, right? Now... Again, a man in his 60s can also kick ass. I know a lot of people don't realize that. But if 60-year-olds uh, are not done, motherfucks. And 50-year-olds, sure as shit, aren't done. But let's call it like it is, right? Sting, after TNA, took a hiatus and eventually appeared in WWE. Where we had to deal with, it's Sting, right? It's Sting, but it's Sting a little bit older. A little bit more past his prime, right? You could argue that he had like a second, like a like a renaissance. like Almost like a second prime in TNA, right? You know, he was putting on good matches. 
But you cannot make that argument in WWE. He can put on a match with Triple H. He can put on a match with Seth Rollins. And they can be okay matches. No one's saying like, but the, the, the mystique dies down, right? And then like 15,000 years later, years later he appears in aw and now he's like the worst he's ever been you know what i mean like again i haven't seen maybe he'll wrestle and he will be extremely impressive anything's possible motherfucks you know i think he's in decent shape considering his age but let's be real right this is not the same kind of sting that came to to tna right when it was legitimately a big deal because they're like yo we have a main eventer not in his prime but almost in his prime right it, it would be like aw signing i don't know like Cena right now or signing like Triple H right like if, like if a let's say another company appears and Triple H divorces Stephanie and like everyone hates him and they sign Triple H like that would be a big deal right because Triple H can still go like there's no doubt about it there's no doubt that Triple H can still wrestle so it would be interesting to see that but then imagine putting Triple H with Darby Allen you know what I mean like there's like Sting feels I can't believe I'm saying this but Sting feels like a mid-carder now he's tag teaming with the mid-card champion against two other mid-carders you know in his 60s. So let's Google how old Sting is. Because we already figured out this other match. But yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, like, uh, it, 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 like the mystique is gone. 61 years old, motherfucks. You know what I mean? That means, what? how old was he in TNA? Like, let's say he joined 2005. He was like 45, 46. He wasn't even that old. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. He, he was champion in, in 2007, it looks like. 2007, 13 years ago. 51, 48. He was 48. That's not that old. You know what I mean? That's not that old. And he was like an active champion. He was wrestling there every week. He wasn't like, you know, he wasn't being held to pay-per-views, right? Like Dean Ambrose is being held to pay-per-views now. Another thing we had in this in this, uh, in this this show was Dean Ambrose addressing the crowd. Admittedly, I skipped this because I'm tired of hearing this asshole say the same five things. Oh, I'm going to kick your ass. Oh, revenge is coming. Dean Ambrose. Oh, I'm dangerous. Get the fuck out of here, you know? So um, the last match was, in fact, uh, Bullet Club versus Dark Order, right? Bullet Club obviously wins. I mean, it goes without saying, right? The the team champions and two of the vice presidents, whatever the fuck they are, executive vice presidents, along with the tag team champions from another company who were who are probably like the heart and soul of Bullet Club after AJ Styles left, Gallows and specifically Anderson, right? Of course these guys are gonna beat uh fucking Alex Reynolds and John Silver, who I actually like, but it is what it is, you know? So they beat the shit out of them. During the match, they do, like, two sweets all the time. Uh, the Young Bucks talk about how they were... What's it called? They were, um... Uh... What was it? They were... Fuck, man. What, what happened? They were, um... Yeah, yeah, They were added to some match, right? And if they win this match, they get to pick their opponents. And they insinuate that they might pick the Good Brothers, right? Now, I'm sure they'll present this as a dream match, but it really isn't. <laughs> Nobody really gives a shit about this match. The only thing that matters here is that Bullet Club is back, Right? And during the match, uh, what's it called? Phoenix. This is when Phoenix appears, motherfucks. Ray Phoenix appears and attacks them. They start beating his ass. Only for John Moxley, Dean Ambrose, motherfucks, to come in and beat the shit out of the bad guys, right? And him and Phoenix stand tall. And the match is him, Phoenix. I guess Pentagon is hurt. Him, Phoenix, and fucking, what's his face? Um, Neville. Pac, motherfucks. Pac, right? And uh, that's how that's going to go. You know what I mean? We're going to have that match, and it's not going to be that good, but it is what it, what it is. The facts are the facts. You know what I'm saying? So there you have it. That's what happened. No one looks forward to this. No one cared. No one was entertained. And with that, we have one more AW review in the books, cucks. Uh, so I'll see you guys later. Actually, see you guys tomorrow, bitch.